So I've been recently having some issues on some paid shoots with my Audio-Technica 4053B. This is a small pencil condenser microphone, small condenser microphone, pencil condenser microphone that is great for indoor dialogue. And it was definitely highly recommended by me as a budget-friendly alternative to something like the Sennheiser MKH-50, which is still a very popular, almost industry standard internal dialog microphone. So this video is going to kind of talk about why you're paying more for the Sennheiser and that price difference that really comes in handy. I'm talking about reliability. Okay, let me start off by saying that this is not me crapping on a brand or anything like that. That is not the case at all. I think Audio Technica is a fantastic brand. I, I still love this mic, but it has happened more than once, not all the time, more than once. And I think I've kind of honed in on the scenario that it's most likely going to happen. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly what's going on. It could be the microphone itself. I don't think so. I think that's unlikely. It's most likely the environment. With that being said, if you guys have any suggestions or an idea of what's going on and how to fix it, then please leave my comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. This is not going to be a comparison between the Sennheiser MKH-50 and the Audio-Technica AT-4053B. I've already kind of did that video and talked about it um, and kind of showed the comparisons. If you guys want an updated you know, video, of course, leave me a comment below and I'm willing to do that. But yeah, I'll... We'll link the other video here somewhere or up here or whatever, maybe in the description so you guys can watch that. This is ma mainly going to be um, just talking about when using it out in the field in a professional settings, why the Sennheiser is way more reliable and the Audio Technica hasn't been 100% reliable. And to be honest, if I'm being honest, it has kind of made me feel a little bit nervous when taking this out and not having a backup so i have been experiencing some audio interference uh when i'm out shooting in professional settings you know not in the studio environment but when you just kind of have to figure it out sometimes um either in a run and gun situation or on site right whatever the client wants or where they're at or whatever they want us to shoot it hasn't been all the time and that's what's kind of worrying me is because um, when it does happen, it's like, ah, crap, right? And then when it doesn't happen, I still love this mic, so I'm kind of torn. Now, I want to start off by saying that so far it's happened three times. And the first time it happened, it was pretty bad, and it actually ruined the, the shoot almost. Luckily, I always have backup microphones, so... I'll have a boom mic, right, which was the Audio Technica, the main mic, the quality mic, running through a recorder, recording in 32-bit float and all that. Then I'll have another shotgun mic on a camera that is the camera closest to the client. Um, that's my second, you know, audio source. And then I'll have a scratch audio source with another camera, uh, if there is another camera or you know, so forth. I, I try to degrade the audio as we go down the line of cameras. And the closer the cameras are to the source, the more, you know, I invest in the audio. Now, I should have had this as a backup, right? Um, you should always have backups of your main just in case. That's my fault. I should have done that. But the reason why I didn't is because we were shooting this person again. Like we've shot him before. We've worked with him before and we shot we're shooting him again and i knew that the sennheiser mkh 50 um wasn't my preferred choice for his voice right he sounded better with the audio technica it's just one of those things right where i just knew that this mic sounded great i got a lot of audio interference i don't know if it was rf interference i can't say what kind of interference it was we were in a um like construction zone area. Now we were shooting in a warehouse, right? But like there was a train nearby, for example, um, there was construction going on. I think the warehouses across from him, they were doing something, they were like an electronic company or they were doing something. Um, 
we haven't shot in that location before, so this was completely new, and this was a new site that he was opening for his business that was gonna handle some like distribution and things like that. Another mistake that I made that hopefully you guys can learn from is I, I wasn't monitoring the audio closely. I was shooting this by myself. And actually all three times it was by myself. Um, anytime I had a second source, actually we never caught it. Uh, if I had someone there monitoring the audio, we haven't caught it yet, but coincidentally it's been me by myself all three times. Um, I, I do monitor the audio as best as I can, but it's hard to do that and then conduct the interview because I'm asking the questions and focus on the cameras and the footage and all that. So long story short, by the time I knew that something was up, um, it was when I was reviewing the footage at home. I was getting these, these like weird clicking, clapping sounds. And like, then when it got really bad, it was like this, like almost like a ticking sound, like, you know, it wasn't consistent. And then it was like actual, like frequencies changing. Um, not crazy, crazy, but like, you can hear it like kind of almost like a humming sound, but you can hear like the frequencies cycling. So it was picking up something. It was definitely picking up interference. I, I don't know if it's RF interference, but some sort of interference. Um, I have shot since at that same location after that, right? Um, and I took this baby and there was no issues whatsoever, nothing. It worked out fine. So I uh, didn't take this back to like test it or anything. Um, but that's the that's the price difference that you're paying for here. Sennheiser is legendary. They're known for being very well built and being able to handle most, you know, harsh environments. But they're also known for being like RF interference kings, right? Like they, they don't get phased very easily. There's a what? A, a almost... $800 difference, $1,000 difference, I forget, between these two mics. And that's what you're paying for. You're paying for that reliability. So it happened the first time. And when it happened the first time, I was kind of like, okay, that's odd. But I didn't really like um, know what was going on yet. I was like, well, maybe it was something else. Or, you know, second time it happened, it wasn't that bad. We're doing a simple interview. Um, it was at an office. And uh, I was just getting this ticking sound in the background, like, clapping kind of like a like a pop like you know like when the person would start talking um or end the 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 sentence there would be a pop or like an effect or like a, a click or something and it was almost unusable because it was between sentences so if they were saying something stopped and then they would say it would click in between and like almost like um when the the audio or the sound was going to the mic there'd be some sort of a i don't know something an interference that was the second time and the third time was actually in this video here we're interviewing a small business owner that was talking about her products this was a very laid back thing it was actually at her house she lives in an apartment in her house there's a lot going on like she had a lot of wi-fi connected devices lights and uh a humidifier and you know things like that um her smart appliances things like that maybe that had something to do with it um and I was getting that clicking, popping sound. So the worst case was the warehouse uh, with the train and the uh, um, audio, you know, company next to him or the sound company, whatever that thing was. And then um, the second was probably just the officer scenario. The third was at the house. This thing does, in my opinion, my theory is it, it is sensitive to RF interference. So if you are considering this microphone, just be wary of that. That's all this is, right? I'm still trying to figure it out. If you guys have suggestions, like I said, let me know. But I'm seeing that this is kind of um, not as bulletproof as the Sennheiser. The Sennheiser, I've never had an issue with the Sennheiser. It, even the 416. Like, they're just known for that. You can go anywhere and, and tell people, hey, most people nowadays have a Sennheiser as a backup just in case they do hit RF interference or whatever. Um, I think the MKH-50 is still the standard for indoor dialogue. Breaking Bad, The Dark Knight, like a lot of people still use this, right? So something weird's going on, and I suspect it is audio interference with Audio Technica, so be careful. Do I still recommend this mic? Absolutely. Like, this is still a great mic. It's almost the polar opposite of 
the Sennheiser. The Sennheiser is colored. It's very flattering. It sounds great. It's boomy. It works really well on male vocals, actually. And getting that deep, raspy voice out, and just it just sounds great. It, it's not a flat frequency. It has its own thing going on, and that's what makes it so unique. The Audio Technica reminds me more of like a flatter frequency, or just, I don't know, like a flatter sound. More like the, I don't know, if you've ever used a Shure SM7B, you can do anything in EQ in it, right? When you go to EQ it in post, you can do anything, but you're gonna get this like flat thing. And you gotta work for the sound that you want versus the Sennheiser, where almost always you're gonna hear the Sennheiser, just the raw recordings, and you're gonna go, that sounds amazing. I'm gonna boost here a little bit and emphasize a couple things, but I love it. With this guy, you're kinda like, oh, I don't know, let me, oh, there it is, I, oh, I like that, you know? And then you're, you're fine tuning it. What I will tell you though is, I love this mic, for female voices, female vocals. It seems to pair really well with female voices because the Sennheiser, again, just my opinion, seems to do really well with male voices. You can still use it for female voices, but usually I'll go, oh, this is great for those voices that are a little bit more higher frequencies, even male voices, but a little bit more like up there and, and there's more mids that you have to kind of cut out. This is good for that. Boomy vo vocals, male vocals, uh, deep raspy vocals. This is great. That's why I recommend this. I still like it. I still think it's great. It has a unique profile and I got to have both, right? Um, if you're in a studio setting, no issues whatsoever. Now, realistically, this would be my backup to the Sennheiser, right? But again, it, sometimes this sounds better. That's why I use it. Going forward though, I'm probably going to always have the Sennheiser in my bag and then this will be the backup. And if, if for some reason I think this sounds better and it's going to be the main, I'm going to boom both of them just, just as a backup. So that's all that I wanted to share with you guys today. It's a really weird thing that's going on. But I think that's what you're paying for with the Sennheiser. You're, you're paying for the sound, the coloring, the tone that the Sennheiser is known for, but also the reliability and the ability to reject audio interference. This is great though, if you are a semi-professional, a YouTuber, um, I think most people would be happy with the Audio Technica at this price point. I mean, you can get these used for like 300 bucks. That's pretty good. You can get these used for like a thousand. I think they sell for 1200 or 1400 brand new. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're doing YouTube, this is the right choice probably for you, but if you can afford it, get the Sennheiser and don't look back, I guess. That's it for me, guys. That's all I want to share with you guys today. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and joining our channel memberships. I would really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one.